to eat and have wore out my clothes. My clogs, they're all broken and stockings are gone. And that scares me to bits with all I've got on. Our parish church parson kept telling me long. We'd have better times if I'd but hold me tongue. But I've hold me tongue till I can hardly draw a breath. And I think in me heart they mean to starve us to death. Find the end and get it pieced up. What are you doing, you whip? Get back to your bloody moon, West. You leave that lad alone. Plenty others want your job, lad. The war's over. Bone is beat. It's victory, my friends. And what difference will it make to the likes of you? Nothing. Nothing. The difference Nothing. is thousands of bastard soldiers Aye. Aye. all crawling the country, all as poor and desperate as you, Aye. fighting you for jobs. Aye. Jobs in these stinking mills. Aye. Jobs that won't pay you enough to put clothes on your backs and food in your children's mouths. That's victory, friends. <laughs> Sharp, Major Richard, Prince of Wales' own. Your orders. What do you mean, Yorkshire? Yorkshire? Yorkshire, Yorkshire, whither you are to go to command the Scarsdale Yeomanry. I don't want to go to Yorkshire, I've got business here. Well, then your business must wait. You can't wait. You go to Yorkshire, or you go to Tasmania, in command of a convict ship, which is where you would have gone, had not your friends put in a word for you. With friends? What friends? Bad news. I'm sent to bloody Yorkshire to command some bloody yeomanry. Yorkshire, that's nice. It'll be kind of a homecoming for you. I've done without Yorkshire more than 20 years and I don't want it now. And don't think you're coming with me. You're going home. Well, maybe I should just see you settled first. I'm not getting settled. I'll stay up there as long as I must and I'll come back down here to find me money and my wife and the bastard that's stolen. But you, Pat, you're going home. Of course I am, sure. Who's there to fight in Yorkshire? An Englishman, I suppose. Oh, not all bad news then. But no one visits us, John. We are left quite alone. It will take time. Society moves precious slow. And you're new to town. But you are not new, John. You could do more to introduce me. Are you ashamed of me? Gosh, my dear. Lady Anne, good morning. Good morning, sir. Mrs. Sharp. I do not know your companion, Anne. Count von Selznick, Lord Rossendale. The Count has expressed a desire to meet your husband, Mrs. Sharp. He, too, is a veteran of Spain. <laughs> Will we find Major Sharp at home? Sadly, Major Sharp has been posted to the north. But you and the Count are welcome to call at any time, Lady Anne. Of course. Good day, John. Anne. surrender. Major Sharp? Yes. Welcome to Yorkshire. Captain George Wickham, at your service. At yours, sir. That was pretty horsemanship. Scarsdale Yeomanry trains hard. 
You must be Sergeant Major Harper. I am he, sir. We would be honored to escort you the last few miles, gentlemen. Keithley is about 20 minutes off. You'll have time to bathe, change to your best, for dinner with Sir Willoughby. We're wearing our best. It's no matter, I'm sure. How did you know where we're coming, sir? Scouts, Mr. Harper. Prerequisite of any effective force. What are you saying, Major Sharp? Will they be the same scouts that have been following us for the past two miles, then? What? How many? Two on either side of us and one ahead. What are you talking about? Musket, the broken oak tree branch at 60 yards. Got him. No luck. Woods are too damn thick. I take it he isn't one of your scouts, Wickham. They were brigands, highwaymen. Country's full of them. So you see, your time in Yorkshire will not all be spent hunting and fishing, Major Sharp. Is that right? They're not very successful highwaymen, to judge you by the look of this one. Whatever. There's one less to hang. We should continue. Sir Willoughby does not like to be kept waiting. Willoughby, may I introduce... I know who it is. Sharp. The worst-dressed bugger in England. That's what they told me, and I thank them for it. What's the point of having a fancy uniform if you haven't got a man inside it, eh, Wickham? What indeed, Sir Willoughby? What indeed, Sir Willoughby? How do you manage to be so damn polite and so damn rude at the same time? Must be all that blue blood, eh, Sharp? Indeed, Sir Willoughby. Ah, touché, Sharp. Touché. I heard you had a skirmish already, is that right, Wickham? If it wasn't for Major Sharp, I doubt I would be here now, Sir Willoughby. Mixed blessing, eh, Sharp? <laughs> Mixed blessing? <laughs> no offence, George. No offence. Nice to have a real soldier with us at last day. Put the fear of God into that thieving scum. Welcome to my humble home, Sharp. I've built it myself and I've regretted it ever since. It cost a fortune to build, and it costs even more to heat. <laughs> The war spoiled them. Wages went up and up. They grew fat and idle. Question of demand, you see. Uniforms for you soldier boys, etc. Now we're all struggling to keep our heads above water. But instead of buckling down, they're fighting us. Have you heard of the machine breakers, Major Sharp? I have not. Machine breakers, mill burners. They believe that the machines will destroy their livelihoods. Therefore, they destroy the machines. Lord Stanwyck has already suffered several attacks. Oh, they'll not drive me under yet. I'll outsmart them. I've got a steam engine coming from Bolton. Does the work of 60 horses. Give you a bit of competition, eh, Perfect? I welcome competition, Percy. I welcome it. Machines mean progress. They mean we can make cheaper cotton, produce more, export more. Wealth through progress. Not through burning my mills and Sir Percy's. Keep the mills safe, Sharp. Keep Sir Percy in business. Now, that's your job. And whenever we get the chance, teach the scum a lesson they won't forget. By your accent, you're a local man, Sharp. I am, sir. Well, where from, man? 
Keithley, Skipton? Where? I don't clearly know, sir. I'm an orphan. Don't apologize for it, Richard. I don't. I'm glad to hear so, son. Hardly your doing, was it? I might have been one myself. Oh, Lord, not this again, Willoughby. I speak as I find, Percy. Them streets raise me, Richard. Not any parents. Age of eight, I was selling scrap from a barra. Age of 14, I had 12 barras, and I was paying my mother a respectable wage to push one for herself. Look at me now. Rattling around in this drafty old pile like a pea in a piss pot. And look at yourself, Richard. Orphan boy, became a major, and took the froggy eagle at Vittoria. Now that is what I call progress. Talavera. Major Sharp took the eagle at Talavera. Talavera, then. Foreign doing. It's all one to me. It's not all one to me, Parfit. I lost a son at Talavera. Died of wounds received. Both legs shot off. He wrote to me after the battle. He didn't talk about himself. He talked about Sharp. Apple of me eye. To you, Sharp. Thank you, sir. I will try heart. The suit you have become expert in. How is Mrs. Sharp, by the way? She is well. Major Sharp will be happy to hear you take good care of her. I see Sharp still intrigues you, Anne. I'm always intrigued by what he will do. I have seen how implacable he is in achieving his ends, whatever they may be. What does Sharp do in the north? I have heard he commands a yeomanry. The Scarsdale Yeomanry, raised by Willoughby Parfit. Parfit? The Barrow Boy? <laughs> he has his own yeomanry. Isn't that the height of pretension? <laughs> he proposed to me once, you know. Regretfully, I could not accept. Just think, if I had, I could have raised my own yeomanry and got you to command it. You would have looked so much better than Sharp, don't you think, Johnny? I... Spades. I will try spades. So, how do you find Yorkshire, Pat? Well, they do have an awful way of massacring the English language. <laughs> what do you think of him, George? Rides like a peasant. Dresses like a peasant. Eats like a peasant. Fights like the devil. He's a match for you, then, is he? <laughs> He's rough. But rough's what's needed. He can be cock on his own, dungy. Sergeant Major Harper, and this is Major Sharp, formerly of the Prince of Wales' own volunteers, now at the Scarsdale Yeomanry. We have the honour of being billeted with you. Ain't I lucky? Who pays for your bed? King George of England. The mad one or the fat one? Whichever one takes your fancy. Neither does. And neither do you. Bed, board, and beer. And a bit of respect. You piece of English arse. So, this is the place you were born in, then? I'm seed, maybe. Oh, nice. Maybe they'll put up a statue to you. Dick Sharp, bastard. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm off for a breath of fresh air, Pat. Yeah, well, I'm going to stay here and make sure no harm comes to this young lady. Oh, that's very gentlemanly of your partner. 
Miss. I need to sit down. Truman. Hello, Dick. Friends, eh? If I were you. Let it go. Good evening, Major. Good evening, Dan. I've got to blow a lump off him for you, sir. No. What are you doing here, Daniel? I followed you from King's Head. Oh, I mean, what are you doing here? In Yorkshire? Looking for work, like the rest of Wellington's army. But there ain't none. Then I heard as you were up here. Aye. Riding round with fat gentlemen. Murdering the poor. Meet Matthew Truman, Dan. My childhood friend. Well, maybe fate threw us together. But you were no friend of mine. You were some troublesome runt then, same as you are now. This is where I grew up, Dan. Where Matthew Truman taught me how to fight. Aye. My mistake. Otherwise, you might have died there. And you wouldn't be taking Judas silver from the rich in order to keep down the people you came from. If you won't work, then, I'll find you a place with the yeomanry. No, sir. Nine years I fought. King and country. For what, eh? I'm done with bloody uniforms. As you will. Go on. Book it off. You think this makes us even? You killed my horse, you bastard. And I slow you for that. Here. Raggedy man. You want honest work? Come with me. Oh, go on. Not in the bloody army now. Go back to London, Dick Sharp. Back to your lords and ladies. You cause no but grief here. For yourself. And for others, go back. Come. A letter for you, sir. A bill, you mean? Put it over there. Jane, there's plenty of cottages on the estate, Richard. Why don't you get out of that flea pit and move into one of them? You don't have people living in them, sir. Oh, idle beggars, all of them. I can turf them out. You earn your keep, Richard. And bring your wife down from London. Get some of this Yorkshire air in her lung. I don't think she would. Not used to the soldier's life, eh? Bond Street and ball gowns, eh? Well, I'm having one here, so you can invite her to that. A ball, a celebration of peace. Glorious victories, foreign 
doings, etc. Oh, you've got to show you're doing the gracious thing. You've got to show you're part of the club. Club? Yeah, gentlefolk, old money. Sir Percy Stanwick and his lot. Can't even piss straight without having a servant hold it for them. And don't think they don't want to see me back down in the gutter. Oh, they do. The only thing that keeps me up is my money. And the fact that I'm better than the lot of them. The same as you, Richard. You've shot up beyond your station, haven't you? What do you know of Matthew Truman, sir? What do you know of him? I heard his name in town, that's all. Probably because he's got a thousand pounds on his head. You fancy a thousand pounds, Richard? Catch the bugger. What's he done? What's he not done? He's the worst rabble rouser and machine breaker in the county. He can shut a mill down just by appearing in town. That's the only thing Sir Percy and I agree on. The best place for him is on the gallows. You put him there. I'll double that thousand pound, Richard. This is Saunders. He manages my mills. He's my eyes and ears in Keithley. Oh, well, spit it out, man. A meeting going on in Adcock's barn, sir. That'll be Truman. Filling their ears with poison. Where's Wickham? He sends his compliments, sir. He's already on his way. Grand. Maybe George will beat you to that thousand pound, Richard. Are you hungry still? Are your children crying in the night? Let me tell you a story to quiet them. It's the story of a bill. A bill from the Prince of Wales presented to Parliament. What sort of a bill is it, you ask? One to ease the suffering of his people. <laughs> to show he knows and cares. No. It's a wine bill. A bill for one year's supply of wine. How much is this bill, you ask? Well, I'll tell you. It's two thousand pounds. Two thousand. Tell me, you who must feed yourselves and your families on eight shillings a week, how many years' labour would it take to pay this bill? How many? A hundred years from now, you would still be working and it would still not be paid. And so the greed of the few adds to the weight of the misery of the many. And so it will go on until we find one voice and stand together. acres. Is that as big as Kent? <laughs> no, sweetness. But it is big enough. Bless Aunt Tabitha. And now we are rich. Oh. Now we can pay off Richard. Yes. I suppose we can borrow against... Yes. The lawyers advise I travel up at once to inspect the property. Then I will come with you. My love, the journey will be long and arduous. Arduous? John, unlike you, I followed the English army half across Europe. I'm sorry. I don't doubt you're a hardier traveller than I. But I fear the property may be somewhat neglected and we will not be far from where Sharp is posted. What if it's in Yorkshire? Lancashire and Yorkshire are contiguous, my dear. Contiguous. Then I thought we were rid of him. Yes. But behind every silver lining, there's a cloud, my love. <laughs> 
Richard would never have thought of that. <laughs> Nevertheless, I am coming with you. Yes. Why, oh, alas, a year after taking up this post, sir. Oh, it's sadly likely that the means of tracing your mother were destroyed in it. Hurry, fuck in it now. thinking, sir, even if we are unsuccessful at locating the records, I was wondering if you might spare the time for an address. Uh, an address for the children, sir. What? Uh, from an old boy, as it were. One who's made his way in the world, who's achieved success. Even renowned, dare I say. I think that'll be grand. You say a few inspiring words to the poor little bastards and you'll have them all following in your footsteps. Everyone a hero. And have one half of them poxed and fever ridden. Another half dead before the twenty. It's the best die first. Ones will stand up bravest. Came to look at your records, not make speeches. Sally, Sally Bunting. I used to work in the kitchen. I used to bring your food, sew your clothes. You ran away and I stayed here. I knew you'd come back, Richard. I just wished it'd been sooner. Sal? Bunty? <laughs> Bunty, aye. That's what you used to call me, you and Matthew. You still see Matthew? Oh, I hear of him. What he does for the people here. They think he's a hero. What do you think? I think he's a hero, too. You should meet him, Richard. You could be friends again. We'll never be friends. If I meet him again, it'll be to arrest him. Oh, Richard. <coughs> Sorry, Sal. This is my friend, Sergeant Major Harper. Pat, Miss Sally Bunting. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. Oh, Sharp and Sergeant Harper. Mr Whitbread we used to read from papers about you. Victoria, Talavera, Badajo, Salamanca. I didn't know we made the papers. Oh, you'd have to read for that, Pat. <laughs> you see, he's a cruel, mocking man, Miss Bunting. <laughs> and me, after carrying him safe and sound through all that blood and slaughter. So you're still here? I am a matron now. Why did you come back, Richard? It's fine, that's all put me here. Oh, the fire, it... Th there might be some other ways. I, I could try to find out for you. It'd be no trouble, Richard. Thank you, Sally. You know, he doesn't deserve either of us, miss. Come on, you lot. Come on, prove yourself. I do, little dog. Yeah, move it. <laughs> I've taken your lady some rum punch, sir. What lady? She was fatigued after the long journey. I offered her the best parlour, but she desired your quarters, sir. Please call if you need anything more, sir. Major Sharp. My lady. Are you surprised to see me? I am. And pleased, I trust. Why are you here, ma'am? This room, Richard. <laughs> Not the most commodious. 
Are you here, my lady? I am concerned for you. Why else? Why are you concerned for me? Well, for one, your wife is being topped by another man. I know about Rossendale. He was your friend, I thought. He was. You've not come this far, only to tell me this. Perhaps I came only to see you. I do not believe so. My lady could have anyone she chose. My lady chose once, and the man she chose was looking elsewhere. Do you know why you're here? It was orders. Why else should I? It was Rossendale. Rossendale? Why should. to get me out of London? So we can enjoy my money and my wife in peace. Richard. Forget about it now. I'm sorry. Have you fallen for another servant girl, Major Sharp? There is another woman. What is her name? Lucille. Lucille Mayo. She has a farm in Normandy. Her brother was killed, so... By you? Because of me. So, you took the farm and you took her. <laughs> How chivalrous. A French girl. Would go down well at horse guards. The war is over, ma'am. And you are faithful to Lucille. Is that touching? Lady Anne. First of all, John, you must get the drive scene to. Yes. And I want some ash planted. And some oaks. Yes. So much more elegant. As I suspected, there is much to be done. That is why we are here. You're early. I didn't expect you. Who's this woman? This room could be pretty enough. It looks south, does it not? It looks north. Well, north then. It could still be pretty. How far is Lord Parfitt's house? Hours ride. Not far. But we cannot go there because that is where Richard is. I don't think. I don't think we will pay Richard off with this, John. Let us not be hasty, Jane. There may be ways. And until then, wherever Richard is, we cannot show our faces. And we must run scared from him all our lives. Is that right? I will ask Mrs. Trent to light some candles. Sharp. 
My lady. Captain Wickham tells me you have come to teach his men the art of war. No, I'm uh, just here, really. I hope you can make better use of your time than that. Perhaps you should ask Captain Wickham to teach you some of the arts of peace. Conversation, for example. Sharp, I have more news for you. What is it, ma'am? Did you dance, Major Sharp? No. What is your news? You should learn. I'm sure. What's her name? Lucille likes to dance now and then, don't you think? Please tell me. Rossendale is here. Oh, not here. Nearby. Parfit says he's been left an estate. Is he there now? Yes. And his mistress, Mrs. Sharp, as was. Jane. Mum, where is this? Stuff, Parfit. I'll wager he'd not try it against a soldier. Wouldn't he, Percy? Why, George Wickham will see any man off. Yeah. Even Major Shaw. Ah, even Shaw. Why not? Richard? Where are you? Sir, I am not one for. You ain't afraid of young George, are you, Richard? No, sir. Then come on, man. Teach the young Sprig a lesson. He's a fine swordsman. He needs no lessons from me, sir. Then you are afraid, sir. In my hands, a sword isn't pretty, ma'am. It kills. We're not asking you to kill anyone, sir. Oh, try me, Major Sharp. You wouldn't even get a touch. <laughs> come, Major. Yes, come on. Why not? Very well. Talavera, sir. Dancing. Dancing and flickering. That's where. Very fine, sir. Very fine. Silly old fart. Did you have a good evening? Rossendale. He has an estate around here. Find it. You think that's a good idea? Said find it. should not stay in a place like this. Nor you, Patrick. It is godless, full of foul drink and blasphemy. Get up, you filthy bastard! Jenny, please. 
Listen, I've tried several times to leave Miss Bunting, but Major Sharp insists on buying more drink. Then shame on you, Richard. I know that Widow Bevan has lodgings. You must move there, both of you, tonight. Dolly, did you come to tell me something? of April 1812, the Lone Hawk went through the breach at Badehof. It walked on nothing but the dead. They were so thick on the ground. Did we still get bread read you that, Sally? as soon as I could. The new estate, you know. Oh, yes. Uh, George, meet George. George Wickham. Boss me yeomanry for me till your fella came up. Shut up, you mean? That's him. Not quite the fighter you made him out to be. George got the better of him last night. Ran him ragged. You fought sharp. And you beat him. Easy, sir. Brain, not brawn. Stop bragging, George. Tain't attractive. Come in, Russendale, and tell me all about this estate you charmed out of your aunt Tabby. The house has been somewhat neglected, but it has a pleasant aspect, and the rooms are comfortable. Houses are easy. If you don't like them, you knock them down. How about the land? You've got plenty of farms paying you rent, I hope. In fact, no. No, much of the land is rough moor, but it has promise, particularly for the sort of industry I see around here. Industry? Is that what you want? I'm surprised the young gentleman like yourself would want to dirty his hands in industry. Others have, Willoughby. Why shouldn't I? Mills don't grow on trees, you know. They get built. They get built by hard cash and hard work. I believe the land gives me more than adequate collateral, sir. See all this, Lord Rossendale? My library. Latin, Greek, Homer, Tacitus, the lot. You think I built this up book by book? Ex libris Willoughby Parfit, did I, L. I bought it off a broke baronet. Same with my mills. My first mill took five years to build and ten years to make a profit. I thought I'd be supping with worms before I get rich. So I went out and I bought other people's mills. Aye. And I bought them even if they didn't want to sell. Then why did they sell? Oh, <laughs> there are ways. And once I've got them, I run them better. Harder. I make the workers work, and if they grumble, well, there's always George here, or your man, Sharp, to keep things in order. Would you like a slice of that pie, Lord Rossendale? I'm happy to be part of any enterprise that shows a quick profit. You need a cash, eh? <laughs> That's the trouble with London. I need cash to pay Sharp off. Pay him off? What for? He abused his wife, neglected and beat her. She could stand no more, and she ran away. I took pity on her. Pity, eh? <laughs> yes, pity. He threatened her and me, pretending an affection for her he has never shown. He demanded money for his silence. I obtained him this commission, yet he still wants more. Glad to be of service, Rossendale. How much cash does Sharp want? 10,000 pounds. This Mrs. Sharp must be quite something. She is. So, you sent Sharp to me to get rid of him, but your Aunt Tabby goes and dies nearby. That's damned inconvenient, didn't it? The coincidence had not struck me, sir. Of course it hadn't. Of course it hadn't. Well, John, Mrs. Sharp, what is she like, eh? Mm. Seems they like us. Anyway, this lot don't look as if they need keeping in order. They look as if they need a good meal or a bath. Don't know why we're bothering. 
I didn't touch you to come. Yeah, so if you don't like it, go. There's nothing keeping you. I need the pay, so I'm staying all right. War's ended, lads. God save the king, etc. Now, we'd hoped with the war done, Europe would open up for our goods. We'd hoped that the ladies of Paris would be swanning around in fancy smocks woven by the workers of Keighley. But it hasn't worked out that way. For there ain't no money in Paris, nor in Madrid, nor in Berlin, nor in any other damn place. Maybe Major Sharp here took all their money. Maybe we should ask him, eh? Anyway, the thick and the thin of it is that times are hard. Choices are hard. And the choice I've had to make is this. Should I lay folks off? No! Or should I cut wages? No! Well, it seems better to me that all should have less than some should have none. So, that's what I've chosen. Weekly wage cut from eight shillings to seven shillings a week. No, you can't do that. It comes hard, I know, but that is the way things are. I can't hardly support my family on eight shillings. How can I do it on seven? I'm sorry, Sam West, but we've just got to draw our belts tight, that's all. I don't see your belt getting tight. The last thing is this. I've heard tell of meetings in town. Meetings addressed by a wanted man, a traitor, a trouble stirrer, Matthew Truman. These meetings are unlawful. Decent wages if there are any more, Major Sharp and his men will break them up and arrest all those attending. No. No. Where is it? Rossendale's estate, man. Listen to me, I don't think you should get involved. I don't care. What is it? Welling Park. That's seven miles from here. And I think you're mad! Where is he? He's not here. Tell me where he is. He's out hunting, I swear it, Richard. Richard, don't. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm going to hurt him. What are you doing here, Jane? I came up with John. Why? To see Welling Park, that's all. How do you find being a lady, Jane? This is John's. It was bequeathed to him. He has no money. He has my money. My wife, he can keep my money I want back. This is gone. Much of it is gone. Then he must get it back. He can sell this rattle for a start. Why, 
Jin. Why did you do it? I thought you... promised you would not fight again. You fought a duel. Then you left me on my own. I did not leave you. I came back from battle and you were gone. You went to London. You took a peacock for a lover. You emptied my bank accounts. You broke your promise. That promise was foolish and I'm sorry for breaking it. But it does not balance up what you did to me. Jane, I thought you loved me. And if I tell you I did, would that make everything better? Would you have me back again? Rossendale's whore. Would you? Tell him I was here. Tell him I will be back. Goodbye, Jane. gathering in town, humans with them. Time to hard, he says. It's a wage cut, he says. Did he say he was cutting his wages? No, of course not. His wage stays the same. His pocket stays full. His stomach stays full. I am big enough. They say, they say it's because the war is over that times are hard. Yet what we'll ask yourselves, when were they ever easy? He's in the square, sir. Well, sir? Come with me. So why did we even fight this war? Yeah. French, wasn't it? Who was our enemy? French. The people of France? Yeah. What wrong did they do you but throw out a cruel, corrupt and feeble regime and install a government that was truer to them and their needs? He doesn't have to hang him already. Well, I'll tell you why. To put back that cruel, corrupt and feeble regime. So that Louis the Gouty could be wingled out of his exile's trough in England to oppress his people again. So fat he can hardly fit his carriage. So feeble he must be carried everywhere in a chair. That's why our soldiers fought. That's why they died. Send half the men down that street. Bring the rest to me here. When I signal, proceed, but slowly into the square. But that will leave aggress, sir. Truman will escape. I will cover those. I want to leave aggress for the crowd, not for Truman. He'll stay to the end. I reckon he'll have words for us. When the square is clear, then's our chance at him. Sergeant Major Harper? Sir. Return with Captain Wickham. Bring half the men directly to me. Sir. Mr. Forsdyke. Sir. Take half the horse. Circle round the back of the square. Come to Major Sharp. Sir, Major Sharp said they should go direct to him. And they do go direct, Harper, but by a circular route. Mr. Falsdyke, if people start to run, sift them for Truman. Sift them fine. You understand? I want no rebel escaping. Right. Here's some fun. I 
say, throw them out! Yeah. Drive them out! Yeah. We will not have peace yeah. nor justice yeah. until we choose the people who rule us! Where are they? He's gone and sent them around the back with Fosdyke. back to slavery. Now he wants to put you to Give the sword. It won't do. It won't do at all. People dead. Workers dead. Dead by my yeomanry. How's that going to look in horse guards? They attacked us, sir. Did they? Where's Sharp? Still in town. Sent you back to face the music, did he? Where's Truman, then? He got away. You didn't catch Truman? What the blasted hell were you playing at? Major Sharp ordered our forces split and that we advance on the people in the square, despite my advice that we concentrate upon Truman only. The result, inevitably, was panic. The mob turned on my men, one was killed. We had to defend ourselves. Unfortunately, Truman made off in the confusion. That's what happened, is it? Yes. I have just heard, Willoughby, this is terrible news. Terrible. Why? Shocking. After all, Sharp was in command. Was he not? He gave the orders. He did. So if horse guards send me a bloodthirsty maniac, what do they expect to happen? Exactly, sir. The strange thing is, all those poor folk died for nothing. Truman's free, ain't he? 
a wanted traitor. Let run free. Now, why do you think that happened? You are not wanted here. Nonetheless, here is where we are. You murdering bastards! What happened in the square was not my doing. It was your men. Dan! To us, man! or more will die. Aye. And you among them. We should leave, Sharp. I will not. Then they'll fight you. Then I will kill them. Before they kill you. And what will it achieve? More dead. And more people to hurt you for killing their brothers and wives. Aye, and their poor children. Leave now, while you can. Bastards! Go on, go on. We'll be on your way. Show your face here. Get out. Get out. Go on. Murderers. Not traitors. Just as I was beginning to like the place. Where to now? Sally Bunsen might take us in, otherwise... Yeah. What happened in the square? I gave the orders. They were not followed. I didn't mean what happened to happen. I tried to stop it. I'm sorry. It's too late for sorry. But I'm still sorry. You should leave. Contrition might not be enough for these folk. A slit throat and a dark night will be enough for you. I'm surprised you care. Aye. Well, there's a lot about me you don't know, Dick Sharp. And there's one thing you don't know about me. I don't run away. And I'm not leaving. Then you're a stubborn fool. Maybe it was you who told me to be stubborn. Didn't teach you into that uniform. But it is the one I wear. I heard what you said about the war, and I'll tell you this much. That I did fight for my king. But mainly I fought for myself and for my friends, and to stay alive, because I was good at it. Trouble is, you were fighting the wrong people. You still are. The Scarsdale Yeomanry, under the command of Major Richard Sharp, taker of the French Eagle at blah, 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 surrounded the square wherein the largely peaceful meeting was being held, and at Sharp's order, charged headlong into the crowd. Despite the admonitions of his subordinate officers, Sharp recklessly and determinedly pursued his aim until the air was rent with the screams of the dying and the stones of Keithley were wet with English blood. What will happen to him? I don't know. Horse guards will order an inquiry. So it is bad for Richard? Yes. It could finish him. At the least, he will lose his commission and end his years in the colonies. Good. Then he will be out of our way. He is an honourable man. I do not believe what the papers say. I regret that I have played a part in his present misfortune.
When I look at you, my love, I think what else could I have done? And what's more, to keep you, I know I would do it all again. Is there nothing a little bit stronger than milk lying around here? Do you know that drink's an abomination, Patrick? Oh, yeah. Sally has mentioned that to me. Once or twice. What are you reading? Book of Job. Job. The Book of Job. He had a terrible hard time. Poor old Job. Boils, you know. Yeah, I read about the boils. <laughs> and this. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. Mm. Very cheerful stuff. <sighs> I don't much like being on the wrong side, Pat. Man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. Must have been thinking about us. I want a headstone for my mother's grave, Sal. <laughs> it's all right, I'll pay for it. But I think my own man deserves better than an old wood cross. An old wood cross? That cross was all that could be had once grave had been paid. I'm sorry, I'm Who looked sorry, after Sal. Lizzie Sharp the last years of her life when all she'd do with her money were drink it? And who tended her when she was poxed and dying? And who waited 20 years for you to come back? And how I wish you had Sally, not. Sally, I'm sorry. I'm a fool. I should have known that you would look after everything. Not just me. Not just me. Matt Truman, too. Truman? You weren't the only crying bundle of rags that Lizzie left at workhouse door. What? He's your brother, you fool. I sought records long before they were burned. It's true. But <laughs> we always fought. I and I always pulled you apart. Does he know? Of course he knows. He laid her in her grave, didn't he? I wanted to tell you, but you were so set against him. <sighs> Richard. I will. I will arrange a headstone, but you must tell me what you want written. I'm sorry, Richard. It's all right. You were right to say it. Truman, what is it? I don't know. Mr. Harper and me wants our rooms back. Major Sharpton. What do you want, Hackman? To talk to Major Sharp. Talk then. Some of us who should have known better were a bit hasty, sir. There were more than a few looking at a nasty death on end of a yeoman's sword when you saw Major Harper intervene. What went on were bad. But I were wrong to think you had out to do it. Everybody will be so easily convinced. But thanks. Now, will you do something for me? I sir. Find Truman. Truman? I don't know. I know you do, Dan. I want to talk to him, not arrest him. I'll tell him. Tell him to meet me at his mother's grave. His mother? Aye, sir. Got it off last at workhouse. I'll wager it was the pox killed her. Ah, same so, sir. Pox and gin. Ladies <laughs> present, gentlemen. Ladies, you know. But what's better yet is that Major Sharp ain't this woman's only bastard, sir. What? Who else? Matthew Truman. Truman? Truman is <laughs> Sharp's brother. 
Oh, stepbrother, I doubt their fathers were the same. Lizzie Sharp was, uh, was very free with her affections. So the brave Major Sharp is the brother of a prescribed felon. Now that is ripe. Don't you find it ripe, Anne? Very ripe, sir. It's more than ripe, George. This is the reason he let Truman get away. That's how it seems, sir. Seems? It bloody is. And they'll meet again. Brotherly love, etc. Which means he'll be aiding and abetting a fugitive, which is transportation, at least. Transportation? It means crows having his eyeballs for breakfast. The question is, where will they meet? Bring it in. Where do you want it, sir? Well, damn this. Why are you here, ma'am? I see your manners have not improved. No. Nor has my situation. What do you want, ma'am? I wanted to warn you, but I knew you would not listen, so... I will give you information instead. Did you know that it is only Parfit's mills that do not get burned? And yet, his are the ones most would like to burn. Parfit organises the burnings? I don't know, but he knows which owners are weak and how to make them weaker. I heard, too, that Percy Stanwyck has a new steam engine coming over from Bolton tomorrow evening, due for one of his factories. I've heard of this engine. It is no secret. Is it no secret that it will not reach Stanwyck's factory? What? It will be attacked and destroyed. How do you know this? People confide in me. And if people do not, doors do. You mean Wickham confides in you? Are you jealous, Major Sharp? No. Why are you telling me this anyway? Because you were foolish enough to do something about it. And because you may want to wipe out some of the shame of your last battle honour, Keithley Town. Do you believe that? No. Wickham, he has a lot to answer for. But then again, he has my lady's favour. Is that what you think? I have eyes. But no brain. All Wickham has had of me, all kissed of me, was my hand. And for that, I was glad to be wearing gloves. I'm sorry. So you say, but your imputations continue. You never looked like a gentleman, but you used at least to act like one. I'm sorry, ma'am. They know about you and Truman, that you were his brother. Are you ashamed to be seen with me, then? No, clearly not. But take care, Richard, please. I will take care of you. Marry a weaver, if you do, he'll break your heart. <gasps> I want to talk to a friend of yours, Sally. Matt Truman. Don't know him, sir. Oh, but you do. And you know where he is. No, I don't. <gasps> Where's Truman, Sal? I don't know.
I'll take this. Solving a conscience, are you? Maybe. Maybe yours too. Why didn't you tell me? Tell you. You were so high and mighty riding with your gentleman, you'd have shot me as soon as talked to me. Yeah. Maybe I would. A soldier in the family. Your man would have died of shame. Not that she had much of that. She knew nothing about me. The famous Major Sharp. No chance. Our mam's universe swam in a gin bottle. England's not what you expected, is it? I'm going to take Parfit on. You're going to fight him? I'll do what I can. I'll wreck one of his schemes anyway. It means changing sides, Dick. And there are precious few on this one. And no changing back, neither. Those are my sort of odds. Aye. Mine too. I'd be glad to have you. Welcome home, brother. Younger! Sally, she was meant to be. Forget her. This road. Daniel Eggman, miss. Major Sharp sent me out to ask you a question. I know. Why did you set the soldiers on him? I'm sorry. I, I tried. <laughs> Who did it, lass? Who did this to thee? Saunders did it to me. I tried so hard to be quiet. Oh, I'm all right. I'm no, all right. I'm no, all right. you're not. <laughs> Look at me, lass. Is he all right? Major Sharp. <laughs> Don't you worry about him. <laughs> I'll have to catch him. I mean, he's used to that. Oh. <laughs> Got some loose ends need tying up. And it looks to me like that bugger Saunders is one of them. What are you thinking? 
But Matt Truman, maybe. No. Well, yes and no. I was thinking about Lucille. Whether Matt would have liked her. <laughs> I think he would. You were wanting to get back home, so you are. Yes, I want to get back. Back to Normandy, back to the farm. She's a fine figure of a woman, you know. That lady, Anne. So is Ramona, Patrick. So you better watch out your tongue wags. Otherwise, you'll phone it wrapped round your head. <sighs> oh, let's settle our scores. Get out of this sorry place for good. Me to France, you to Ireland. Aye. That would be grand. Sir, there's another score to settle. Too sharp. The romantic who set free this exquisite woman for us all to admire. I second that. As lovely as money you are, miss. Come on, Johnny, raise your glass. You'll be able to afford a better claret soon enough. I'm sorry Lady Anne could not be here. She pleaded a headache. Though I suspect it was more fear of being outshone by you, my dear. <laughs> Captain Wickham. Steady, George, steady. I thought Annie was soft on you. Uh, my cloth is cut too fine, sir. Her taste is for rutting in a midden. No doubt with that scoundrel sharp. <laughs> Another toast. Another toast? To sharp the outlaw for handing us Truman on a plate. May he soon swing beside him on a... Get it! George! Pardon? Forgive? It is no matter. What do you say, Rossendale? I'll swap you one of my mills for this young beauty. Hmm? That seems fair to you. Hmm? I give you warning, sir. You're going too strong, George. Rain in, man! Rossendale doesn't need any of your mills. He'll have his own soon enough, courtesy of Sir Percy. Excuse me, gentlemen. Here is to smoking mills and a prosperous life. I shall kill him. John, don't be. He insulted you, drunken, arrogant pop. He is a drunk. He is a pop. It is no matter to me. Jane, I will not have you looked at. Spoken to like that, I cannot bear it. John, I left Richard because he would fight with anyone for no reason. Do you want me to leave you too? From Parfit, we could return to London. We will have nothing more to do with him. Isn't that better than making an enemy of him now? Yes. Oh, Jane. What would I do without you? Sometimes I wonder. Someone rang the bell. I did. Go in and clean up the mess. And two. Anne! What is it? You got tired of Parfit's company, have you? No. But I was in danger of outstaying my welcome. I have a message for you. Another invitation to one of his interminable dinners, is it? No. A warning. About your steam engine. What? What about it?
You two don't have to do this, you know. You're not in the army now. We know we don't have to. You'll hang if they catch you. Never stopped us before. Any road. What else will we be doing on such a night as this? We could be having a good long drink. Or a mutton chop. Or a goodly wench. In a goose feather bed. Aye, goose, goose feather, feather bed. <laughs> mine. Together? Separate? I can take you scum any time. Do me the honor first. First listen of battle, keep your feet. Sharp. Thank God you've come, my lord. They fell upon us out of the dark. Slaughtered the wagoners before... They take first, sir. We tried... I have eyes, sir. I can see my engine attack the men killed. I see you and your thugs with blood on your hands. That's what I see. Exactly, sir. Now, if you'll order him to unhand me... Quiet! I'm talking to you, sir. Yes, you, you prancing coward. You and your bunch of murderous footpads. Major Sharp, you are entirely at liberty to finish the job that you started. My lord. End him, sir. You have reason enough. No. He's done more than enough to deserve a hanging. Let him hang. I won't dirty my sword. Percy, what's all this? I know your game. Weaken and buy up. And where you can't buy up, burn out. Percy, I... Don't Percy me, you jumped up gutter snipe. So, I was your target, was I? My men to be butchered. My engine destroyed. 
my mills to fall into your pocket. Well, they're not going to, are they? When mills start falling, they'll be yours. While you rot in a cell thinking on your greed. Sir Percy, I protest. I knew nothing about your engine. And if workers have been hurt, I can arrange to compensate. Sharp, sharp. I don't want to hear it. Major Sharp. You have some demands, sir? Yes. You also will obey. You will write me a letter to horse guards. You will tell the truth of what happened in Keithley Square. You will describe the role of Captain Wickham. And you will lay the blame for the deaths where it belongs. At his doorstep. Is that clear? And you, my lord, will obtain release from my commission with the Scarsdale Yeomanry. I don't know if I can. You pull strings to do it, pull them to undo it. Yes. I will do it. And as for the rest, nothing has changed. Do you understand? Thank you, sir. Thank my son, Sharp. And old oh, tell the story. Will the line hold? Will it scatter and run? Shall we at last be united in glory? Only remembered for what we have done. Only remembered. Only Sally, and no headstone. Half it won't be beyond digging him up again. Maybe there'll be a time for names soon enough. Aye, maybe. But now you'll leave and forget us another 20 years. I've come to ask you a favour, Richard. You think I still do favours, Jane? If you place any value on what was between us. Value. The value of what we had between us is short by 10,000 guineas. Is money everything? It is to you, Jane. The minute you found a lord, you lifted your skirt and fell on your back. What's your favour? Do not ask him to sell the estate. I've already asked him. And he's already promised me. He will not do it. He will. Or I'll kill him. If you do not promise to leave him alone, he swears he will not obtain you the release from your commission. You will be deserting your post. You will be hunted down and arrested. Oh my God. He's even more afraid of you than he is of me. Tell me, Jane. Is this the life you want? With a man like him? I have made my bed, I lie in it. It is soft enough. He 
He will write the letter if you promise to leave us be. I don't care about the letter. I want the money he stole from me. Money which was earned by my blood and the blood of my men. You cannot have it. We were man and wife. That money was mine as much as yours. If you come after him, he will ruin you. At horse guards everywhere. You will have no career, no prospects. There is no war. So I already have no career. And since your little lord won't keep his word, there's no point in talking to him. If I see him, I'll kill him. Is that clear enough to you? You will never have the chance. You're right, there is no war, so they don't need you. They'll be glad to be rid of you. You're a relic. An embarrassment. Worse. You're an animal. All you can do is kill. John doesn't have to have a sword in his hand to be a man. I thank God for the day he saved me from you. He's a hundred times the man you ever were. He knows how to talk. He knows how to live. And he knows how to love. Your mother was a whore. You were born in the gutter. And that is where you still belong. Prettier women, faster horses, and some decent conversation. What about you, Dan? I ain't got anywhere else to go, sir. Besides, I'm getting a taste for the local ale. That's not the only local you're getting a taste for, Dan. Hey. Look after it. Good luck to you, Dan. Good luck, my friend. All right. Look after yourselves. Oi! You know what they say? What? Vive la France!